name is Harold York. I'm a research scientist in Pasadena, California, and I will be talking about the physics of figure skating. And I'm going to break it down into three basic categories, gliding, jumping, and spinning. And I must admit, this is the most elegant and most beautiful example of applied physics. Gliding uh, is possible because of the very low friction between the ice skates and the ice. And I'll get into that a little bit later. It can't be zero because otherwise you wouldn't be able to move at all on the ice. Jumping is converting uh, horizontal momentum, uh, the motion in one direction, to vertical momentum, the motion in the upward direction. And finally, spinning uh, has two parts. You first have to apply a torque to get a spin, and then there's something called conservation of angular momentum, which allows you to spin very fast. And of course, all of these three can be combined. You can jump and have your spin and glide on your landing. And this forms a very beautiful uh, motion. If you take a running leap, then you can actually get up uh, to a higher height, and you're converting your uh, forward motion into vertical motion. And this is the trick with jumping on ice. When you see uh, a skater jump on ice, they don't jump in place. They usually build up speed before they do their jump. Now, to get a spin, you have to first apply a torque to start the spin, and then use something called the conservation of angular momentum. The torque is, the way a skater does this, is to convert linear motion and start a circle. In other words, when they're skating, they move in a circle. That's applying a torque and they start their spin. Uh, conservation of angular momentum can be written that uh, I'm going to call angular momentum L. That's equal to something called the moment of inertia times the angular frequency. This is the spin frequency. And Conservation means that this should be a constant. Uh, what, a spater, what a skater does is to change his or her moment of inertia so that when the moment of inertia becomes smaller, the spin frequency becomes larger. And that's how they speed up their spin. Uh, so the moment of inertia is obtained by taking the mass of every molecule in your body and multiplying it with the distance that molecule is from the spin axis, squaring that distance, and then summing up that over all the molecules. And this would give you the moment of inertia. So if I have a large radius, then my moment of inertia is large. If I have a small radius, the moment of inertia becomes smaller. So a skater does, they extend their leg and their arm out, increasing their moment of inertia when they start their spin, and then they bring things together and they make themselves as small as possible and they spin up. So it's a combination of these three elements, gliding, jumping, and spinning, that put together produces these beautiful routines. Uh, and they're all based on physics, applied physics. Thank you for watching.